The first reading is from the book of Genesis. The Lord God called to the man, Where are you? he asked. I heard the sound of you in the garden, he replied. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? he asked. Have you been eating of the tree I forbade you to eat? The man replied, It was the woman who put you put with me. She gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman replied, The serpent tempted me, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, be accursed beyond all cattle, all wild beasts. You shall crawl on your belly and eat dust every day of your life. I will make you enemies of each other, you and the woman, your offspring and her offspring. It will crush your head and you will strike its heel. To the woman he said, I will multiply your pains in childbearing. You shall give birth to your children in pain. Your yearning shall be for your husband, yet he will lord it over you. To the man he said, Because you listened to the voice of your wife and ate from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat, accursed be the soil because of you. With suffering shall you get your food from it every day of your life. It shall yield you brambles and thistles, and you shall eat wild plants. With sweat on your brow shall you eat your bread until you return to the soil. As you were taken from it, for, the dust you, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. The man named his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all those who live. The Lord God made clothes out of skins for the man and his wife, and they put them on. Then the Lord said, See, the man has become like one of us with his knowledge of good and evil. He must not be allowed to stretch his hand out next and pick from the tree of life also and eat some and live forever. So the Lord God expelled him from the Garden of Eden to till the soil from which he had, be, had taken. He banished the man, and in front of the Garden of Eden, he posted cherubs and the flame of a flashing sword to guard the way to the tree of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responses, O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. O Lord, o Lord you, you have, have been, been our refuge, refuge from, one from one generation, generation to, to the, the next. next. Before the mountains were born, or the earth or the world brought forth, you are God without beginning or end. O Lord, o Lord you, have you have been, been our, our refuge from, from one, one generation, generation to, to the, the next. next. You turn men back into dust and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. O Lord, o Lord you, have you have been, been our, our refuge from, from one, one generation, generation to, to the, the next. next. You sweep men away like a dream, like grass which springs up in the morning. In the morning it springs up, and flowers. By evening it withers and fades. O Lord, o Lord you, you have, have been our refuge, refuge from, from one, one generation, generation to, to the, the next. next. Make us know the shortness of our life, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent. Is your anger forever? Show pity on your servants. O Lord, you have, you have been, been our, our refuge, refuge from, from one, one generation, generation to, the, to next. the next. Alleluia, alleluia. Man does not live on bread alone, 
but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat. So Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I feel sorry for all these people. They have been with me for three days now and have nothing to eat. If I send them off home hungry, they will collapse on the way. Some have come a great distance. His disciples replied, Where could anyone get bread to feed these people in a deserted place like this? He asked them, How many loaves have you? Seven, they said. Then he instructed the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves. And after giving thanks, he broke them and handed them to his disciples to distribute. And they distributed distributed them among the crowd. They had a few small fish as well. And over these, he said a blessing and ordered them to be distributed also. They ate as much as they wanted. And they collected seven basketfuls of the scraps left over. Now there had been about 4,000 people. He sent them away and immediately, getting into the boat with his disciples, went to the region of Dalmanthua. The Gospel of the Lord. We so often read about the miracles of Jesus, but do we, do we really believe that they happened? Do we really believe that Jesus sat down with 4,000 people and provided them all with food, seemingly out of nothing? Numerous scholars and biblical critics over the years have tried to come up with rational explanations for miracles. Many have suggested that they are perhaps exaggerations of past events. A bit like the Chinese whispers, every time the story was told, another thousand people somehow get added to that incredible number of people that was fed. Others have suggested that Jesus didn't really multiply the loaves. He simply managed to convince the people to share the food they already had. And others still, have suggested that the miracles never really happened at all and that they are simply stories designed to convey a message. And the message is more important than whether the story is actually true. Personally, I would not take any of these approaches. The fact is, if it is possible to give a rational explanation for a miraculous or supernatural event, then it would no longer be a miraculous or supernatural event. Through miracles, God intervenes in the natural order of things, and he does so in order to manifest his power and glory. The fact that they are so difficult to explain is precisely the reason why they are so powerful and awe-inspiring. If we deny the reality of miracles as we read them in the scriptures, then what is there to stop us from denying the resurrection, the virgin birth, or even the very existence of God himself? The difficulty for us, perhaps, is that miracles do not seem to take place so frequently anymore. 
God no longer seems so willing to reveal himself, perhaps. So how do we respond to that? What can we do? Should we give up? No. With all my heart, I say no. When the prophets struggled to hear the voice of God, they did not stop listening out, but they begged the Lord to reveal himself all the more. Just take a look at the Psalms, all of the Psalms. They describe people crying out and pleading with the Lord to manifest himself once again to all the nations. And I am convinced that that is what we need to do. That is what any community claiming to be Christian needs to be able to do, to get down on our knees together, to get down on our knees before the blessed sacrament and to beg the Lord to reveal himself again in our day. This is what the Israelites did in the desert. This is what the prophets did. This is what the apostles did after the crucifixion as they waited in the upper room, not knowing whether Jesus was going to come back to them or not. This is what we need to do together as a parish, as a community, We need to recognize our need for the Lord. And we need to beg him with all our heart to reveal himself again in our day. Then we shall see his power. We shall see his majesty. We shall see his glory.